I'm attorney Nick Alcock. In this video, we'll talk about bond eligibility and the likelihood of getting a bond in Arizona for immigration proceedings. So if you find yourself or a loved one in immigration proceedings and you're worried about getting a bond, I really urge you to watch this video and think long and hard before you hire an attorney. There's certain things you gotta know. So before you hire an attorney, you can get these questions answered even if it isn't our law firm. So, so please say you're facing removal and you wanna know, can my loved one get a bond or can I get a bond? This video is for you. So if you are here and you committed a crime that gets you into a deportation proceeding, a removal proceeding, uh, the question as to whether or not you're gonna get a bond if you're taken into custody is a very, very complicated question. It's one of those questions that uh, really no lawyer can give you the answer within 30 seconds. And so if you talk to somebody and the person's like, yep, you know, within 10 seconds, oh, absolutely, we can help you, that should be a bit of a red flag because every criminal conviction needs some close inspection and you gotta know who the judge is going to be, you gotta know a little bit about the person. Some questions need to be asked. In general, bond eligibility comes down to danger to community and flight risk. And those are two kind of broad based vague questions and most people would just instinctively say well i'm not a danger to the community and i'm not a flight risk so that's not really how immigration judges think though that's not what they consider what are they considering for flight risk well how long have you been in the united states what are your ties to the community say you've only been here for a very short period of time well that might lead a judge to say well you're a flight risk because you haven't been here for that long or say that you had a number of parking tickets or civil traffic offenses or very petty criminal offenses and you didn't go to court. Uh, a judge could look at that and say, well, you know, you failed to appear for this traffic ticket or you failed to appear for this uh, shoplifting case, something like that. As a consequence, I think that you're a flight risk, the judge could say. Dangerous to the community, again, a case perhaps that you were involved in, but the, but the charges were actually dismissed but the case say is a drug case or the case is a case involving violence. The judge could still take some of those factors into consideration and say, no, I've read the police report and I know that no charges were ever brought or the charges were dismissed, but based on what I'm reading here, I feel like you are a danger to the community. So I urge you to be very, very cautious. If somebody says, yes, absolutely, you know, we're, we'll get you a bond, be cautious of that determination comes very quickly because there's some questions that really need to be asked even if somebody has a clean record even if somebody's never really been in trouble never been convicted of a crime there are things that need to be known now on the other hand there are certain types of offenses that make you bond ineligible and those are crimes of, in, uh, involving moral turpitude aggravated felonies and certain drug offenses so there is, if you go online and you're like, hey, I wanna know um, the CIMT list. I wanna know the aggravated felony list. I wanna know what types of offenses make me bond ineligible. You're not really gonna find one website that says this is exactly it. And each case needs to be looked into. And in some cases, you have to look into exactly what was said at the time the plea was entered. Because within certain laws, there are subsections and you know there could be for example subsections a b c d and e when a and b are no good but c is okay and d is iffy so these are all things that need to be considered and your actual record needs to be looked at if a lawyer is saying look let me charge you a thousand dollars so i can look into whether or not you are eligible again take that with a certain grain of salt because it isn't that much work to look into whether or not someone is eligible of course a conversation needs to be had of course some investigation needs to occur but whether or not you should be paying a thousand dollars in many cases we hear horror stories from people who've gone to other attorneys and they pay a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars to do an investigation where a lawyer within a reasonable amount of time say 10 15 20 minutes of investigation would realize look this person's not eligible for a bond there are some cases where someone is eligible for cancellation of removal but they're not bond eligible and the classic example would be certain uh, drug offenses. So there are certain offenses where you know, you're, you're stuck in custody while your case is going on. You can't get a bond, but ultimately you might win your removal proceedings. So what you need to know before you're moving on and before you start uh, you know, hiring somebody for a bond hearing is that a lawyer really should be able to tell you what your chances are reasonably. 
And there are some cases in front of some judges where you know this is a very low percentage possibility of getting a bond, or if you do get a bond, it's gonna be a very high dollar bond. There are some cases where you look at it and say, look, this is a person who's got a, there's a very, very good possibility that a bond could be had. And those types of things can be said before you agree to hire an attorney. And it's okay for a lawyer to say, look, based on my experience, this is a, this is a case that we think that there's a reasonable poss possibility of obtaining a bond. Of course, no lawyer can give a promise or guarantee, but a lawyer should be able to give you an idea of how tough the case is. And so also be careful, if you think that your case is tough and you realize, hey, I've got some significant uh, issues with my criminal background, but the lawyer's like, yeah, you know, like, we'll, we'll, we'll rock and roll. Be careful with that because a lawyer can always take a bond hearing case. A lawyer can always you know, take your money and then go do the hearing and lose. And so I think it's very important before you proceed with any immigration case to know realistically what your options are, realistically what's the likelihood of outcome. And a good lawyer should be able to give you some semblance of an idea of how tough the case is. Can't give a percentage, give like, oh, 99% of these cases, yes. But it can give you a thumbnail sketch about what it is that you're looking at. And it's, it's only fair because in the detention environment, especially in the COVID era, it's a dangerous environment. Do you want to be in custody for several weeks while your case is being litigated when it's a very, very low percentage play? Some people, absolutely, absolutely. They'll, they'll pay any price. They're, it's it's 100%. And some people are like, well, had I known that this was such a low percentage case, I would not have done it. So we do an investigation for free at the beginning of the case. And if it's a situation where you know, we, we uncover that there is a criminal offense that makes somebody ineligible. We'll let somebody know, obviously, uh, if it's a situation where it makes it a low percentage case, we let our clients know immediately. And so there are no secrets. We don't charge for this investigation. It's not a situation where, you know, we're withholding anything or charging to determine whether or not we should move forward with a bond hearing. These cases mean the world to me. And I think that our clients, who are, you know, they're, they're great people and they deserve to be here. I am not in alignment with the immigration laws of this country. And so I do everything I can to be upfront, honest, and a tireless advocate for my clients so that if they do agree to retain our services, they're doing it with their eyes wide open, knowing everything that I know in my head. That's the best that I can do. And I really try to employ the golden rule uh, in every aspect of my practice. When it comes to bond hearings, I really try to exhaustively lay out, these are your options, this is what you're looking at. Uh, bond eligibility, uh, cancellation of removal, eligibility, whether or not you qualify for cancellation of removal, or some other avenue of relief, such as adjust, adjustment of status through a family member, these are questions that are can be given, it just takes a little bit of time. We don't charge for consultation. I don't believe in that. I believe in helping people. Uh, and if you come into my office, you know, I wanna help you. Even if you don't retain us, I want you leaving well-armed, well-educated, absolutely aware of what your rights are. And that is, can be very calming. It can be, it can be very, very useful as you move forward. So going before you hire an attorney, if you go to a law office and, and you don't really know, hey, do I qualify? They're charging money to find out whether or not the, you qualify, whether or not bond is a possibility. They're not telling you what your chances are, things like that. Come to our office, you have absolutely nothing to lose because we don't charge any money for the investigation. We don't charge any money to start a case. And we're gonna ask the right questions and we're gonna be totally straight up honest with you. And many, many times people have come here, we've been, completely honest with them. Look, this is what we see. And based on that, we move forward. Or based on that, they say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna retain your services. And that's the best that I can do. That's the promise that I make you. So here are the, to recap, if you are facing criminal charges and you are not a US citizen, you need to know before you sign on that contract, on that plea agreement, what are my immigration consequences? You gotta know that. That is a knowable thing and we can also help you with that. If you are in immigration detention and you are pre-detention hearing, you, you have a bond hearing coming up and you, know, you, you need to know before you hire an attorney whether or not the attorney can obtain a bond and also whether or not you are eligible for cancellation or removal. And the lawyer should also do uh, an investigation to find out whether or not there are alternate means of relief. Is there a way for you to adjust your status 
through a family member or some other mechanism. That's what we're all about. Uh, and that's what I believe in. I believe in the immigrant community. I am an Arizona native and what I have seen throughout my life and my career, great, unbelievably amazing people who have contributed so much to Arizona, so much to this country. And the immigrant experience is so woven into our country. I can't imagine living in this country without the contributions of the immigrant population. So this is extremely important to me. I will fight as hard as I possibly can for anybody who's in removal proceedings. And I'd just like to have that opportunity. Our number is 602-989-5000, 602-989-5000. I know I've been talking a lot, but if you call us, you'll find out also that we listen. 602-989-5000, any immigration case involving detention, any immigration case involving cancellation or removal, we've got a very experienced staff of attorneys that focus exclusively on those types of cases, litigation cases, and we're here to help you. Thank you so much. My name is Nick Alcock. I look forward to speaking with you.